So I'll now create some circles to finish off the package outline. But first I'll just get rid of these locators using the Delete Locators tool. And then I'll open up the Key Point Curves toolbox again. And this time I'm going to create a circle. Now we don't use these Key Point Curves often, so just read the prompt line to see what inputs are needed. So we need to enter the centre of the circle so I can use the Point Snap here. And then it wants a point on the circle radius. And that'll be a relative 310 in the X direction. Now that's measured the distance correctly, but the orientation has defaulted to the XY ground plane. And that will always happen in a perspective view. So I can just delete that one. And then I'll do exactly the same thing again. And start with a point snap. But now if I go into the left view and type in exactly the same, 310 in X, my circle gets created in the orientation of that left view. Now, before I go any further, you may notice these lines here. And these are called guidelines, and they're created whenever we use the key point curves. And they're intended to help with snapping. But if you want to get rid of them, you can simply say delete guidelines, as they can clutter up the screen. And what I do is I go to the general preferences. And in the modeling section, I set the maximum number of guidelines to zero and that prevents them from getting created in the first place, which is what most users do. So now let's have a look at the locators again and measure this time the radius of the circle. And one thing you'll notice is that the radius is not constant or exactly accurate as you move the locator around. And some people get very alarmed by this. But it's nothing to worry about, it's just an option we have in Alias that you can set in the construction options. Down here at the bottom, I'll just close off the units, we've got this section called Rational Flags. And this setting is only used for circles, and it's how we get them accurate rather than approximate. So if I switch to User Defined, I can now choose Rational for new curves and surfaces. So now if I build a circle, so I'll point snap, switch to the left view, and then type in 310, exactly the same as I did before. This time, if I check the radius, it's an exact and consistent value. So it's an accurate circle. And the reason we don't use this all the time is that Alias needs to create a lot more control points to hold that exact accuracy. And in general, we aim for fewer points where possible. So if we don't need the exact accuracy, then we normally work without the rational settings on. So I'll go back to my general CAD settings and just be relaxed about any slight inaccuracy. Now any of the key point curves can be modified using the information window. So if I select this line for example, then in this attribute section it displays the length of the line and I can modify it, say to 770. So the line gets extended, but the circle doesn't move to the new end position. It's not parametric in that way. So I need to update that by doing a move and point snapping it back onto the end. So now I've got the circle active. You'll notice in the information window that the attributes now show me the radius, which I can change if I want to. So the information window and the prompt line are the two key tools for working with dimensions in Alias. So I'll now just delete the locators and then I'll save the file, as we'll use this later as an outline for building our new car surfaces. And in the next tutorial, we'll bring in some reference geometry in the form of a polygon mesh, and use these layout lines to size it correctly for our new design. And if you want to understand more about circles and the rational setting, then there's a Theory Builder document that covers it in detail, called Circles and Revolves.